welcome to the August the 3rd, 1993 taping of It Happened in Grand Prairie. As we bring to you the history of our city and some of the very important people that have really been responsible for making a lot of that history. We're very pleased to bring you history tape number 203 and also to bring you the Hopkins family. And first of all, we're going to welcome Mr. Davis Hopkins. Davis, welcome to the show today. Thank you. We're just so glad to have you with us today. Well, we're happy to be here. Wonderful. And Mary Lou Hopkins, wonderful lady. We're, first, we're just, first of all, really excited about having you to uh, be our third party of this interview today. And we know we're going to uh, have a lot of good things uh, for the people of Grand Prairie about the history. Thank you for coming today. You're welcome. All right. First of all, let's begin with Davis. Davis, front and center. And we'd like for you to look out to your camera where you'll find Mr. Jones doing some real good camera work today. Uh, and uh, let those people know about your genealogy. Start off with your parents and give us some good data. Okay, my uh, father's name was Benjamin Archie Hopkins. He came to, well, he was born in Cass County, Texas in 1882 and came to San Saba County in 1907. He met my mother, who was Fanny Burleson Hopkins, and they were married in December of 1909. Oh, wonderful. And I had eight brothers and sisters, of whom there are I mean, five of us still living, one brother in Dallas, a sister in Monaghan, a sister in Richland Springs, and a sister in Waco. Would you like to name drop those sisters and brothers that are still living? Okay, my sister, oldest sister, is Alice Bragg of Monahans, okay. Irene Pierce of Richland Springs, and Ruth Cardwell of Waco, and my brother is Burleson Hopkins of Dallas. I was born in Richland Springs and went to the schools there. And I guess one of my favorite teachers probably was my first grade teacher, a Miss Beulah Mae Walker. Beulah Mae Walker. And when you're speaking of this Springs, what is the county? San Saba. That is San Saba County. And, and uh, what is the county seat of San Saba? San Saba. San Saba, San Saba County. That is way out at the other end of the world, isn't it? it well, it, it's almost. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost the uh, geographic center, Brady. Uh, yes. McCullough County uh -huh. claims credit for that, but we were only about 15 miles from the geographic center of Texas, the heart of Texas, which is Mercury. And uh, I was raised in that county. And uh, what did your dad do for a living? He was a farmer. All right. And a uh, stockman and on the school board an awful lot down there. All right. And what was the school board that he served on? Richland Springs Independent Richland, School District. Richland Springs. And was that a, a seventh grade school or a 12th grade school or 11th grade school? When I started, it was 11 grades, and before I could get out, it was 12. All right. <laughs> and you graduated from that wonderful school in the year of? 1946. 1946. That was a good year. Yes, it was. And um, tell me a little bit about going to school at Roaring Springs. Uh, did you have um, favorite subjects? Uh, you named a favorite teacher, but... Well, I always enjoyed the uh, agricultural part, FFA. That was a lot uh -huh. of fun. Uh -huh. uh, I liked English. I liked history real well. Uh -huh. All right. And uh, we were... The first school building I was in was a rock building, two-story, without any electricity. No lights. No lights. No lights. All right. Did you all have the old gasoline lanterns? No. We, None? we had sunlight. Had sunlight. sunlight. That was it. That was it. Uh -huh. And if it just happened to be a dark day, you just had to look a little closer. You had to look a little closer. Yes, you did. All right. But it's very interesting. Were you ever into the athletics of your school? Yes. Uh, that was a good diversion to keep from having to go home in the afternoon and go to work. And do the chores. It was much easier to play football, basketball, and run track in school and uh, then it was to go home and pick cotton or peanuts or corn, maize or different kinds of, of uh, 
field products. All right. We're going to get back with you in a minute, but let's let's get over to Mary Lou now and, and establish her genealogy because we finally want to get up to the story about how you two met. But let's go back to Mary Lou. Mary Lou, would you look out into your camera and let us know about your family that you'd like to talk about? My father's name is Coy Garrett. Okay. Uh, he's And my mother is... Annie McCaska Garrett, and um, they lived in Concho County, the town of Paint Rock. We lived on a ranch. Um, my father has been, uh, my father died about five years ago. He lived to be 91 years old. How marvelous. My mother is still living in Paint Rock. She's 89. And I have one brother, uh -huh. and that is Coy Garrett, and he lives in Arlington. In Arlington, Texas. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. All right, and uh, growing up out in Concho County, I presume you were born in that county? I was born in Tom Green County, okay. which is San Angelo. All right. Okay, Tom Green County in San Angelo, and that's sort that's of... That's next, do next, next county. Next door to that, next door to that. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, let's get back to your uh, grandparents. I believe there's a story about your wonderful grandparents that we need on this record. My grandparents came from Czechoslovakia, and my grandfather was six years old when he came over on the boat with his parents and his brothers and one sister. And my grandfather loved to talk about um, how the little girl, the sister, caused him so much trouble that it would have been better if they had thrown her overboard. <laughs> and he had three brothers and, and one, the one sister. And uh, they settled in Bryan, Texas. Their homestead is now part of A&M University how wonderful. campus. Right. And then they went on up to Eola, Texas. Um, my mother was born in Bryan, uh, but they had about 11 children. And their house is still standing. It is one of the uh, old Montgomery Ward catalog houses. Everything in it came in a kit from, I believe, Chicago. The, uh, the cement, the paint, the wooden nails, everything. Came from Montgomery and Ward. Montgomery Ward, it's two story. It has a basement. My grandfather was, uh, had his own electrical system and everything, and all of that is intact in the basement. And you can go down in the basement now and you can look on the different boards and you will see stamps where it was stamped at what, what went with what. And they all, the children together, helped dig the basement and build the house. It's a beautiful home and it still stands way out in the country. All right, is it still in your family? Yes, it is. Oh, that My is... uncle has it. Your uncle has it. Isn't mm -hmm. that wonderful that you've kept it in the family all of all these many years? That's great. That would be a great historic tour, wouldn't it? It would. They, they have been asked to try to get a historical marker. Oh, yes, that would be uh, Out in the garage or the shed, I believe, is still the old buggy that they went to school in. Hmm, that is great. All right, let's, let's get on back now down to the nitty-gritty, too, and get back with you. And okay. uh, after uh, Roaring Springs and Richland all of the good... Springs. Richland Springs. Richland Springs. Richland. All mm -hmm. right. R I C H L A N D. Yes. I don't want to get you in Roaring Springs when it's Richland. It's Richland. All right. The Richland Springs School. What happened to you then? Well, after I graduated from high school in 1946, I went into the service for three years. All right. Name the service. Into the uh, Army and the Finance Department. Okay. And almost immediately, I was shipped overseas. All right. To, uh, Italy. To and Italy? I, mm -hmm. And I spent oh, about a year, a little over, in uh, Italy, and then came back and went to Fort Ord in California okay. and served out the remainder of my uh, enlistment in Fort Ord in Monterey. Mm -hmm. And okay. came back to 
Richland Springs for the summer and then went to school and uh, enrolled in San Angelo College. Mm -hmm. And that's where I met Mary Lou. And that's where you met Mary Lou. Right. Well, the trip to San Angelo was certainly worthwhile because well worth it. that was well worth it. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, let's get back to Mary Lou, and, and she's down in Paint Rock and Concho County and Tom Green down in that territory. What brought you to San Angelo? To go to school. To go to school? To go to also. college. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's get back and talk a little bit more about your school when you were a young person going to school. Or were you out in the country to a country school? No. No? Uh, uh, we lived about five miles out of town. Mm -hmm. But I always went to school in Paint Rock. In Paint Rock. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That was the county seat. Uh, sometimes we didn't have 300 in the whole school. Mm -hmm. And you might think it was a country school, but it was the largest school in, in the county. county. Oh, in the county. Yes, that's right. Do you have any favorite teachers or anything you'd like to leave a record? It's been so long ago. Yes. Uh, probably Miss Huddleston. She was my first grade teacher. Mm -hmm. She was everyone's first grade teacher. Mm -hmm. And when she you were in high school, did you have any special subjects or uh, special activities you'd like to mention? History, probably, mm -hmm. and uh, we all liked PE. We played a lot of volleyball. Mm -hmm. Who was the mentor that encouraged you to go to San Angelo to further your education? Probably my parents, because right. it was about 30 miles away. Yes, uh-huh. Did and you commute or did you live on campus? I lived on campus. Lived on campus, uh-huh. And uh, in San Angelo, uh, how did you meet this young man? Well, I was, my first year, we didn't have dorms at the college, so I lived with the school librarian. Mm -hmm. And I always had to stay late at school for her to close up the library, so uh -huh. I'd be going up and down the hall, and I saw him. Mm -hmm. and, and that was the beginning. And you said, this one belongs to me. And he asked me to go to the um, band and football banquet. And it happened to be on my birthday, which was February the 7th. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know at that time that I was only 18 years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so that's that right. was the beginning. That was the beginning. Mm -hmm. That is a wonderful. And so you have... Uh, proceeded on down the line till you were married and now you have a wonderful family and a great heritage but uh, let's get back with Mary Lou. Mary Lou would you like to uh, name the children wh while I'd like for you to show and tell Davis if okay. you'd like to hold them up All while right. she's talking about them. Okay. Okay right. this is Ronald Hopkins. Now let's be sure that we can um, get a, the camera to come in on on yeah. All right. He graduated from Grand Prairie High in 1976. Okay. And went on to you. He was valedictorian. He was valedictorian. How wonderful. He had the National Merit Scholarship. All uh, right. Ronnie went through Grand, uh, the Grand Prairie schools with a perfect A attendance, all uh, record. A awards. A. Uh -huh. He. Even in even at UT, he never made less than an A. Oh, that is great. <laughs> that is wonderful. And, um, and what is he doing today? He is in Los Angeles working for Aerospace Corporation. He majored, he received his PhD in orbital mechanics. Mm -hmm. And when they launch a rocket or space, he is the one that determines the space window that they launch into. In fact, he's a computer whiz. Oh, that is great. And he, uh, he launches, finds the window, the right orbit, mm -hmm. and then he stays with it a couple of orbits, and if it's in orbit, well, he says his job is done. He has done. Oh, yeah. that is wonderful. All right, and, and you are certainly proud of him, as, oh, yes, as is Mary Lou. Oh, sure. that's great. And your next children? Is uh, Deanne. Hopkins Williams. Uh, she is, and her husband is Terry Williams. Okay. And they live here in Grand Prairie on Vineyard Road. And um, Deanne is with the Grand Prairie School System. She's an RN, and this will be her first year to be assigned to Grand Prairie High School. All right. Oh, that is great. So, uh, so she's going to be a gopher nurse for all the She's gophers. going to be a gopher nurse. She has had the elementary schools now. She's been in the Grand Prairie system about five years, and in the uh, 
Dallas school system probably about four years as a nurse, and she graduated from TWU in Denton. And Terry is with AT&T and has been with them for 17 to 18 years. I couldn't tell you how long, but he's a computer computer whiz of some of some kind. Yes, we don't know. Computer. Well, you have you have computers in your uh, uh, children. That's wonderful. Deanne's also a, I guess, the only certified nurse practitioner in the Grand Prairie School System. Oh, great, great. That's wonderful. All right, now let's get to Davis Hopkins. And after you married and you were in San Angelo, uh, you're back from the service and you have all of this uh, time with the Army and finance. Uh, what were you going to do when you left school? Came to Dallas and uh, got a job with Chance Vault Aircraft. Chance Vault Aircraft, uh huh. Mm -hmm. And you want to talk about any departments or the excitement of working at Chance Vault? And well, it was exciting because uh, it had just been here three years since it moved from uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And I hired in as a machinist yes. in the uh, production area. And I thought that was just going to be a temporary job until I found something better. And I stayed there 41 and a half years. 41 and a half years with Chance Vault. You even saw the names change and all of it had You had, had to have a scorecard to keep up with the names. Yes. Uh -huh. But I transferred from the production department into the uh, manufacturing engineering department after a couple of years. And I stayed there the rest of my time. It was... Uh, Interesting to work on the different model aircraft. Some were revolutionary, like the VTOL. Yes. And the F-8, which was one of the first supersonic. And then the A-7, which had such a longevity in the service and was in the Vietnam War and even on up into the Persian Gulf War before it was finally uh, retired from the service. So I felt good about working on those different programs and uh, seeing them bear fruit and become uh, very integral parts of the service. The last few years that I had it, which was back to Vault Aircraft by that time, I was in new business and spent several years there trying to uh, bring in new business, of which I made five trips to Argentina Great. and one to Taiwan. So I got to know the route to Argentina just almost in my sleep. And I enjoyed going down there because it was interesting and working with the people of Argentina. They were good people to work with, very friendly. And they had a modern factory, which surprised everyone that we had Air Force officials that went to Argentina to look at their factory and they thought they were going into a thatched hut syndrome and some of us had been down there about a month getting the factory ready for them, and they were surprised to see that it was a modern, up-to-date factory. That's wonderful. That was a wonderful experience for you in yes, your job, it was. wasn't it? Yes, it was. All right, let's get, let you rest a minute and get to Mary Lou. Mary Lou, did you ever work out of the home? Uh, off and on. Off and on. Uh, the first, about the first seven years, I worked in Dallas. I uh, started with Austin Bridge Company and then went over to the IBEW, the union for Dallas Power and Light. Yes. And that's where I knew your father and all of that good stuff. And uh, then I retired for about 20-something years. And after the children were out of high school and into college, um, I worked some at the library mm -hmm. and some at the Chamber of Commerce and just and ended up at LTV. Yes. And worked there five years. And you were doing what at LTV? Computers. Computers. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. And uh, at that time, my father passed away, so um, I quit work. I had more out in West Texas to take care of. Yes. And uh, that was the end of my working. Mm -hmm. And so both of you are LTV retirees. I think that's wonderful. That's great. All right, let's get back to Davis Hopkins and... Uh, we need to talk about two or three different things. First of all, about church and about any organizations that you want to mention. And especially as a city council member, you were into politics. What on earth brought you into politics, Davis Hopkins? Well, that's kind of strange that uh, there was, you know, we had discussed 
about the uh, Bradshaw survey. East of our house was vacant property and was undeveloped for several years. Gene Gorey had developed across the street from the Breezy Hill into uh, Camelot. And this piece of property was vacant and it was up for development and we found that there was a service station to be placed probably within 50 feet of our bedroom window. Oh my. So that upset us a little bit. We mobilized the neighbors and uh, we had petitions at City Hall and uh, we didn't win there but when we went the next best route we got a mayor and a council member elected and then I was on planning and zoning and all the meantime this property was uh, being dormant and undeveloped and then uh, I was elected to the council and during this time the developer came to made peace with the neighbors and it's now the uh, Northtown development That's great. where there's homes. All right. So that got us into politics. Mm -hmm. That got you into politics? Yes. Well, I know that you're into other things. Your church, would you like to talk about that or would you like for Mary Lou to do any of the talking about that? Well, we are members of First Baptist Church mm -hmm. and been members there since, what, 1950? Way back in the dark ages, Back right? in the dark ages, yes. back in the early 50s. All right, that's great. Are there any other groups that you want to mention? Uh, well, I was in, uh, or I am still a member of Samuel Hamilton Sonic Lodge, which I am a past master. Oh, great. And the uh, Grand Prairie Chapter 219 of the Order of the Eastern Star, I'm a past patron of that. Yes. Involved in Boy Scouts for many years through First Baptist Church, Troop 196, and I was Scout Master there for several years. Yes. Oh, that's great. All right. I, I, I think we've hit all of the, the marks on that for you, For and but we have something exciting, I know, to tell about the Bradshaw farm. Uh, who's going to talk about that? All of a sudden, you uh, you hit a real nerve with me, because in historical circles, the Bradshaw survey there mm -hmm. has been with us since, oh, back uh, about the time Mr. Goodwin had his cabin mm -hmm. out in... Mm -hmm. um, Yes. Northwest Grand Prairie and uh, the Duvals and the Bradshaws and some of those names are very sacred to us in mm -hmm. historic circles. Mm -hmm. What about the Bradshaw area that you live in? Your house? Well, the house was was built by Jewel Maples, All right. who was uh, a daughter of Granny Duval. All right. And uh, they only stayed in it, lived in it just a few years, and then we purchased it in 1962. And um, it's got a lot of things about it. Uh, the uh, wagon wheels and the hubs that are put into the concrete in front of the house, are they're all from Huntsville Prison. All right. Uh, the brick, it's got those crazy melted clinkers that looks like a crazy man built the house, we always say Vic Maples did it. <laughs> uh, and people that knew Vic Maples would agree. Yeah. And uh, those came from, I believe, Ferris, Texas, yes. and they're all melted. And, but the brick are from a lot of different places because you can see the different names on them. And when we lived there, uh, there was only three houses way out there. We burned our own trash. We didn't have city water or anything like that. Yeah. And uh, we've even had buffalo come through and get in our garage. And I believe you mentioned that you have a, a, an old iron bed that's very historic to you. We have the three-quarter iron bed that belonged to Granny Duval when she was a little girl and her trunk. I think that is wonderful. That, those are historic pieces in themselves. Is there anything you'd like to say about the location of where you live on, on Breezy Hill or near Breezy Hill? Well, it's really quiet and peaceful up there because they are to the west of us only a couple of houses and to the north is the uh, convent from the Sisters yes. Holy Family of Nazareth. And, yes. and that's quiet and then our neighbors to the east are very quiet so it's a very peaceful and serene place. It's a country home within the city. We watch squirrels every day running up and down the trees and rabbits and different things. 
It's wonderful, the area in which you live. Mary Lou, would you like to tell us anything that uh, any organizations or church, or did you teach Bible school or anything like that that you'd like to put on the record, or your interests? Well, way back when the children were in Sunday school and, and in church, we taught, we both taught in the beginner department mm -hmm. of Sunday school, and then as the children progressed, we uh, were in whatever they were in. The PTA, the PTA and band, and driving taxis. And yes, and dancing lessons yeah. and all of that good stuff. Yes. And I was mother advisor for the Rainbow Girls, oh, which wonderful. is part of the Eastern, Eastern Star. Eastern Star, it is, isn't it? Uh -huh. yes. When Deanne was in the Rainbow, so. Yeah. And uh, just kind of come up with them. And when they left and went away, I, re I guess we retired. All right, now that you all have retired, what are you doing with your lives? We're busy. Try. I, I knew that you were busy. I almost couldn't find you for five years to get you on the show, so I know how busy you were. We're you traveling. Been traveling. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, where have you been? Go ahead. <laughs> okay, we just got back from uh, Cozumel last Saturday. It and where is Cozumel? It's an island off the Gulf of, uh, in the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean Sea off Yucatan Peninsula. Oh, how exciting, yes. And then we spent the month of April in uh, Arizona, northern Mexico, and California. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We went through the uh, lava beds in northern Sonora. Do you have any special hobbies? Well, I guess we, uh, mine, I guess, is probably work. We work around their place all the time. Yes. When we're not traveling. When you're not traveling. All right, we'd like, to, I'd like to talk with you a little bit before we leave the set about serving on the council and serving planning and zoning. What were some of the interesting things that happened during your tenure? Well, probably one of the most uh, rewarding activities on the council was the people south of I-20 between Beltline and Matthews Road had for a fire truck to get into that area it had to go all the way to Great Southwest Parkway on uh, going west and come east to get back to them which cost about 10 or 15 minutes of travel time. Yes. We asked the uh, highway department to make that two-way and of course they turned us down. So a group of us went to Austin to visit the State Highway Department board and we were able to persuade them to make this temporary two-way traffic on the south side of I-20 between Beltline and Matthews Road. And it still is. It's still temporary, but it's still two-way oh, traffic. That, that is a real blessing for us here in the city of Grand Prairie. Well, I want to thank you all very much for coming. I can't believe we've already used 30 minutes of wonderful time. There's so many other stories I know that you could tell us and that we could salute you for being a wonderful couple here in Grand Prairie, Texas that have added much to the quality of life in our city. I want to thank you all very much for letting us do the interview. Thank, thank you, you, Ruthie. It's wonderful. And this is Ruthie Jackson reminding you that history is as we live and do.